8, EE7A. This is eighth grade expressions and equations. Uh, the seventh part with a subpart called A, and we're going to be solving linear equations with one variable. We're going to be talking a lot about what an equation is and the different parts to it. A um, couple of key notes. This is a very long paragraph. Uh, I'm going to do my best again to kind of uh, put these words into words that you will better understand. So um, when solving linear equations with one variable, there's three things that could occur. The first thing that could occur is you could have an equation in which there's only one answer from the number line that would work. We call that one solution, and that is recognized by these letters down here as x equaling a. So x could only be one possible answer, and we could call it a for right now. The second thing that could occur is that x could actually be um, any answer off the number line. We call that infinitely many solutions, and that actually does occur. And um, they've changed the uh, lettering down here to saying anything a is always equal to a. So that means whatever we plug in for our variable, um, both sides will look exactly alike. Uh, and you're going to see that later on here today. The third thing that could occur when you're solving these equations um, is that nothing will work. There's no number off the number line that will work for that variable that we use. Um, and we call that no solutions. And the standard recognizes it as two different letters of A equaling B. So A is never equal to B, which makes common, you know, makes a lot of sense that there would be no solutions to that equation. This is a very vocab heavy part. Um, I'd like you to pause the video and jot down all these words in your journal and define them. We're going to begin with the basics here. We have two equations. One is in the blue writing and one is in the red writing. You should be very familiar with the blue writing as uh, we solved equations last year in seventh grade for one variable. and. Um, it says x plus 5 equals 10, and you need to figure out what x is. The red equation on the bottom um, is going to be a little bit new for you, where they have that same variable x, but they put it on both sides of the equal sign. Um, even though you see two letters, it's still the same variable, which is why they call this an equation with one variable in it. So that equation that I was just talking about, it has x on both sides. Um, before we get into actually solving it and trying to figure out what that variable is, let's talk um, about the parts of an equation. Uh, there are four words down here on the bottom. Uh, they come right off of your vocabulary list. And um, I'm going to just spend some time uh, filling out that little chart there so we understand what the equation means. Terms. Terms are the parts. They are the separate parts of the equation um, that are separated by either addition or subtraction signs. So I see an addition sign on the left, and I see an addition sign on the right, and that has created four terms um, to this equation. So let's list those out here. The term, the first term is x. I'll call it positive x or positive 1x because there's only one of them. The second term, it's separated by the addition sign, and we call that 5. You can write down positive 5 if you like. It's going to help you later on as we simplify. On the right side of the equation, we have a 3x. I'm going to put the positive in there just because I like to do that, and it helps me a lot. And then the 2 is the other term, the final term. So we have four terms. Now let's talk about those four terms um, in a different way. They want to know what a constant term is. The constant term is the term in red, up on the red line here, um, that does not have any variable attachment to it. It's not attached by a, um, what was I going to say? It's not attached by a variable um, in any way. It's not attached by multiplication, and there's no fraction bar or division sign there. Um, the constants are just those dangling integers um, that you see without the variable attached. 
So the first constant that I see is 5, and the second constant is the 2. No variables attached in any way. A coefficient is the opposite of that. It's, it's the number actually that is attached um, to the variable. So it can either be attached by um, multiplication where it's just stuck to it. Um, sometimes you might see, I'll write it up here in the top, x divided by 2. You know, instead of multiplication, we're dividing. Uh, you might actually see that written as 1 half x, and it's touching. Um, all of those are considered to be coefficients, the numbers touching the variable. So I see a 1 touching the x right up here. And then I see a 3 attached to the variable. Now, you don't need to write down the x with it. They just want the number touching it. That's the coefficient. Like terms. The like terms are uh, plain and simple, the, the terms that look alike, um, the ones that we're going to be putting together later on. So um, if I start with the variables, I have 1x. Well, who looks like 1x? They both have an exponent of 1. Um, they just happen to have different coefficients. So the 3x would go with the 1x. And then I have to put my constants together. Um, they are different than the x's, the variables. Um, so we're going to put them separate in their own category. So we have a 5 and a 2. And the chart is complete. You don't need any of that. Your turn. Pause the video and fill out the chart. Okay, check out your work. If you have any questions on that one, you can see me in class. Now we're gonna solve. And last year we spent some time solving these equations. And um, if you recall, we drew a wall right down the center of this equal sign and it created um, two sides to the equation. And uh, we worked a lot with inverse operations. Today I'm going to do a little bit, uh, something a little bit different. I'm going to be combining my terms by shifting my terms from one side to the other. And you'll see that right here. Um, in math, when you take a term and bring it to the other side, uh, a very simple operation occurs. You, you just change the sign of the term that you brought over. So uh, I've just chosen this 2x. You can choose any of the four to either, you know, two to the left you can bring or you could bring the other two to the right. As long as you have one term always on a side, of, you never want to empty one side of the equation. So always have at least one term on each side of your equal sign. So I've decided I'm going to bring this 2x over to the left. And by rule, I'm able to just change its sign. So changing a 2x to a negative 2x is just fine. And we didn't do anything with the 12 and nothing with the negative 1. All right, so I, I was able to bring my um, coefficient uh, with the variable over to the left. Now I'm going to try to gather my constants together. I don't want to bring the negative one over to the left also because then, I, like I said before, you don't want to empty um, any of the sides of the equation. So I'm going to bring that 12 over to the right. So what am I going to do? I'm going to have to bring it to the right and I'm going to have to change its sign. So these stay the same and I'm going to 
bring that 12 to the right and change it to negative 12. All right, I'm going to do some quick math here. 3x minus 2x is 1x, and negative 1 take away 12 is negative 13. So uh, there is only one answer to this. x is equal to negative 13. Negative 13 is the only number in the world that will satisfy the equation when I substitute it in here and I substitute it in here. Yeah, you can check your work by doing the math on the right and then check your math, uh, do the math on the left and, and they should be equal to each other. All right, I have taken three separate examples. Um, I want to explain right from the standard uh, what happens when you get one solution, infinitely many solutions, or in a case of no solutions. I've also added in a distributive property here, which is one of your terms. All right, let me create my wall. And let's solve. Uh, it looks like it's going to be easier to bring the 2x to the left this time. So 6x, change the sign, it becomes negative 2x. I didn't do anything to the 15 or the negative 1. Let's bring the 15 over to the right. And what happens when you take the 15 over to the right? It becomes negative 15. So now we have 4x equaling negative 16. Inverse operations of multiplying, we divide both sides by the 4. And x is equal to negative 4. So this is a situation, again, where there's only one answer from the number line that's going to satisfy this uh, x variable and make the statement true. The left side will always be equal to the right side. And from the standard, um, that was known as x equaling a. Second problem. Distributive property, um, I'm going to roll through the distributive property here real quick. If any of this is um, confusing, remember, talk to me in class. Five times x is five x. Five times one is positive five. And many of you see right now that we could be done. Uh, 5x plus 5 is equal to the same thing on the right side. So no matter what number we pick off of the number line to substitute in here for your x and your x, they're always going to be equal to each other. So that means all of the numbers will work. Or in other words, there are infinitely many solutions. You know what? Let me continue. Um, trying to combine as many of these terms as, as I can um, so that you can see from the standard what that's going to look like also. Give me one second here. Let's bring the one of these 5x's over. So 5x, the change of signs. Let's bring it over. Now let's get our 5's together. What happens here? This 5 becomes negative, so I bring it over to the right. So what is 5x minus 5x? Well, that's 0x. And what's 5 minus 5? Well, that's 0. And anything multiplied by 0 is always equal to 0. And what does that mean? From the standard, once again, that is a equaling a. The 0 is the same number, so a is equal to a. Third problem. Distributive property. Multiply by each term inside. Do it again on the right here. Okay. 
you might see that 3x added to 30 can never be 3x subtracted by 3. Just mathematically, that doesn't work out. Like in the last problem, I'm going to continue writing this all the way down and combining my terms and see what that looks like. So let's bring our x's over here. So 3x, I bring this 3x to the left. It has to become negative 3x. I didn't touch the 30, and I didn't touch the negative 3 yet. So now we have 3x. What happens when I bring this 30 to the right? Well, it becomes a negative 30. So now I have 0x equaling negative 33, or in other words, 0, because anything times x, uh, I'm sorry, anything times 0 is always equal to 0. And 0 is never equal to negative 33. These are two different integers. So in this case, they say a is equal to b. So that means um, a is never equal to b. You can't have that. Um, so we call that no solution. So um, again, the first problem relates to one solution. The second equation has all of the answers. They call it infinitely many. And in the third case, um, 0 never equals negative 33. You know, 5 never equals 10, or negative 8 never equals 12. So if you ever come up with any of those possibilities, um, there is never going to be an x that will work in that equation. It's just a random equation. All right, so there were a lot of numbers uh, re really crowded on that last page. Um, when you come to class uh, this week, we're going to be spending a lot of time working through these together, um, either one-on-one -on -one or in small groups. I'll get the stations going for you um, tonight. In your journal, I'd like you to define the terms from page two, as always, and uh, write a few sentences uh, what you learned from this video. See you in class.